Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1682, René Robert Cavalier de La Salle claimed the Mississippi River Basin for France and named the area Louisiana. I think tomorrow I will claim the local Costco. In 1731, Spaniards cut off British mariner Robert Jenkins' ear in the Caribbean. This causes a war between Britain and Spain. Cutting off his ear wasn't very nice, but a war? Come on. In 1768, in what is often considered to be the first act of resistance to British authority in the colonies, John Hancock refuses to allow two British customs agents to go below deck of his ship. In 1784, Great Britain ratifies the Treaty of Paris, thereby ending the American Revolutionary War. No, it wasn't in 1776. In 1829, in Danzig, what we now call Gdansk, Poland, a dike breaks and the flooding kills 1,200 people. In 1933, in Peterborough, New Hampshire, the first U.S. tax-supported public library opens. In 1852, Brigham Young first explains the Adam-God doctrine to his Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints congregation. In 1860, a French inventor makes the first ever recording of the human voice. In 1864, in the U.S. Revolutionary Battle of Pleasant Hill, Louisiana, nearly 3,100 soldiers die. Also in 1864, Union surgeon Mary Edwards Walker is captured by Confederate troops and charged with being a spy during the U.S. Civil War. In 1865, General Robert E. Lee of the Confederate States of America signs a Treaty of Surrender at Appomattox Courthouse, effectively ending the American Civil War. In 1866, a Civil Rights Bill passes, overriding U.S. President Andrew Johnson's veto. In 1867, oddly only passing by a single vote, the United States ratifies a treaty with Russia for the purchase of Alaska. In 1870, the American Anti-Slavery Society is dissolved. In 1872, Samuel R. Percy patents dried milk. I often wonder why that's even a thing, but okay. In 1913, Ebbets Field opens for the Brooklyn Superbas. Fortunately, they later changed their name to the Dodgers. In 1928, a rather risque new play called Diamond Lil opens in New York City and introduces the world to Mae West. In 1939, African-American contralto Marian Anderson sang to a grateful crowd of 75,000 people at the Lincoln Memorial after the Daughters of the American Revolution would not allow her to sing at Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C. In 1940, Germany invades both Denmark and Norway. Denmark surrenders in only six hours. In 1941, the PGA establishes the Golf Hall of Fame. In 1942, United States forces surrender to Japan on the Bataan Peninsula. In 1945, the United States Atomic Energy Commission is created. Also in 1945, the Liberty ship docked at Bari, Italy, which is carrying bombs, explodes and kills 360 people. In 1945 as well, the NFL now requires players to wear long stockings. In 1947, the Glacier Higgins Woodward tornadoes kill 181 people and injure 970 more in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Also in 1947, in what becomes called the Journey of Reconciliation, the first interracial freedom ride begins through the Upper South in violation of Jim Crow laws, with whites and blacks riding in cars together on interstate highways. In 1950, at the fourth Tony Awards, Cocktail Party and South Pacific win. Also in 1950, today was Bob Hope's first television appearance. In 1957, the Suez Canal in Egypt opens to shipping. In 1959, influential American architect Frank Lloyd Wright passes away. Also in 1959, NASA announces the selection of the United States' first seven astronauts, whom the news media quickly call the Mercury Seven. The book, movie, and miniseries, all called The Right Stuff, captures this beautifully. In 1959 as well, during the 13th NBA championship, the Boston Celtics sweep the Minnesota Lakers in four games. This is the first of the Celtics' record eight straight titles. 
In 1960, South African Prime Minister Hendrik Volverd survives an assassination attempt after being shot in the face twice. In 1961, the Pacific Electric Railway in Los Angeles ends operations today. In 1962, at the 34th Academy Awards, West Side Story, Sophia Loren, and Maximilian Schell win. In 1963, due to his efforts during World War II, Congress conferred honorary U.S. citizenship on Sir Winston Churchill, former British Prime Minister. In 1965, the Astrodome opens in Houston, Texas, and hosts the first indoor baseball game. Mickey Mantle hits baseball's first indoor home run. Also in 1965, the Beatles released their song, Ticket to Ride. In 1967, the first Boeing 737 makes its maiden flight and becomes the best-selling airplane in history. In 1968, today was the funeral of Martin Luther King Jr. Also in 1968, Minnesota's Wayne Connolly is the first player to score on a Stanley Cup penalty shot. In 1969, the Chicago 8 pleads not guilty to federal charges of conspiracy to incite a riot during the 1968 Democratic National Convention. Also in 1969, the British-built Concorde II supersonic airplane makes its maiden flight. In 1971, Ringo Starr releases his single, It Don't Come Easy, and Pete Best wonders why. In 1972, Sugar, a musical adaptation of Marilyn Monroe's 1959 movie, Some Like It Hot, opens at the Majestic Theater in New York City for 506 performances. In 1973, the movie Paper Moon premieres, starring father-daughter team Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill. In 1974, McDonald's and San Diego Padres owner Ray Kroc addresses Padres fans by saying, Ladies and gentlemen, I suffer with you. I've never seen such stupid baseball playing in my life. In 1975, today was the first game of the Philippine Basketball Association. Even though it was just in 1975, they are the second oldest professional basketball league in the world. In 1976, All the President's Men, detailing the Watergate investigation and starring Dustin Hoffman and Robert Redford, is released. In 1979, at the 51st Academy Awards, The Deer Hunter, John Voigt, and Jane Fonda win. In 1981, the U.S. Navy nuclear submarine USS George Washington accidentally collides with a Japanese cargo ship, sinking it. In 1984, at the 56th Academy Awards, Terms of Endearment, Robert Duvall, and Shirley MacLaine win. In 1986, the TV show Dallas announces it will revive the killed Bobby Ewing character. Sure, why not? In 1989, heavyweight boxer Mike Tyson punches a parking attendant when asked to move his car. He sure did fall apart when Custom Auto died. Also in 1989, Ricky Henderson steals his 800th career base in New York's 4-3 loss to Cleveland. In 1990, Capital News, starring Lloyd Bridges, premieres on ABC TV. In 1992, a U.S. federal court finds former Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega guilty of drug and racketeering charges and sentences him to 30 years in prison. Also in 1992, a record 18 golfers shoot in the 60s in round one of the Masters. I would not have been one of them. In 1993, today is the Colorado Rockies' first home game. They beat the Expos 11-4. In 1994, the Rock for the Rainforest Benefit Concert is held in New York City. Performers include Sting, Elton John, James Taylor, Whitney Houston, Luciano Pavarotti, and Tammy Wynette. In 2001, American Airlines officially completed its acquisition of Trans World Airlines and became the world's largest airline for a while at least. In 2002, today was the funeral of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, at Westminster Abbey. More than one million people lined the streets. In 2003, Baghdad falls to US-led forces today. In 2005, Prince Charles marries Camilla Parker Bowles. In 2009, Parks and Recreation, starring Amy Poehler, Nick Offerman, and Aziz Ansara, debuts on NBC TV. In 2011, American director Sidney Lumet passes away. He was best known for movies like 12 Angry Men and Dog Day Afternoon. 
In 2012, after overtaking the Phantom of the Opera today, The Lion King becomes the highest grossing Broadway show ever. In 2013, 37 people are killed and 850 are injured after a magnitude 6.1 earthquake strikes Iran. Also in 2013, the French Senate approves a bill allowing same-sex marriage. In 2017, two Egyptian Coptic churches are attacked by suicide bombers, leaving at least 44 people dead. Also in 2017, Twitter footage of a passenger being forcibly removed from a United Airlines flight in Chicago after the flight is overbooked causes internet outrage. In 2018, U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois becomes the first senator to give birth while in office. No, not in her office, while in office. Also in 2018, supergroup Fleetwood Mac announced their new members, Neil Finn and Mike Campbell, after firing longtime member Lindsey Buckingham. In 2019, ecologists announced that after 140 years, wolves have returned to the Netherlands, and the sheep were thrilled. And lastly, in 2021, the La Soufrière volcano begins erupting on the Caribbean island of St. Vincent, ejecting a plum of ash 20,000 feet into the air. Thanks for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.